All right, boys, you ready for what I got today? Ready is an understatement. I'd say I'm feeling more eager. How about you, Barry? You're only saying this because it ain't you at the helm this time. Can you really blame me after what I went through last time? Fair. Quest to kill the Ender Dragon did have quite a few errors. Okay, but that was my first map. At the time, I was solely focused on making something goofy that I knew would get under Donald's skin. Yeah, okay, you know, I honestly don't know if I truly believe that, Joe. Well, I mean, it's the truth. You know, it's okay to admit you didn't know what you were doing. Yeah, and is it okay to admit that you were acting like a sourpuss the whole time? You added perfect chaos to your map, Joe. Do I need to say anything else? Creative decisions were made in the last map, but I'm optimistic that we'll be seeing some better stuff here today. Joe, you said this map was superior, right? Gameplay-wise, yes, it is. Uh, wh what about the story? Well, I'm gonna be honest with you, Barack. Or, well, to be honest, the story for this map is a bit more simplified compared to Quest to Kill the Ender Dragons. What do you mean by simplified? You see, I thought about making a follow-up to the previous story, but then I figured, ah, uh, it ended pretty good. So I then went back to the drawing board to think up a new idea. Okay. Admittedly, cooking up the idea for the next story was hard. So hard, in fact, that I had the urge to take a break. Sitting back, I scanned around my office, deep in my own thoughts. Ooh, that's a dangerous place to be. Piss off, Donald. Sorry, sorry, it was right there. Anyway, yeah, I looked around and saw my Oculus. I picked it up and played some Beat Saber for about 30 minutes when the idea finally struck me. Virtual reality. <laughs> This is what Joe thinks about while running the country. Donald, please let him finish. Can he just boot up the map while you prattle, Joe? Well, okay, how about I condense it for your damn attention span? If you would, please. This fucking guy. Anyway, long story short, you're an intern for a video game company who sought to create the world's first realistic virtual reality simulation. In it, you will be put through a variety of tests and scenarios which analysts in the real world monitor the machine's performance. Ooh, that's actually really interesting. What's the name of the map? A series of events. Hmm, I'll admit I kind of do dig the concept, but what's up with the name? It's the name of the test run that one of the head developers created for the project. Okay, that's pretty cool. Go ahead and start it up, Barry. Okay, let's do this. Barry, should I take a shot for every flat world village I see? No, I need you coherent for this. Wait, what is this? The intern steps out of the bright light, which acts as an entryway from the real world into the world of uh, well, I guess the virtual world would be the proper way to put it. Or maybe digital zone? I'm in a video game, Joe. What am I looking at? You're in the developer's hub, which also acts as a starting point. Here you will acquire your beginning weapons and food to help you on your journey. Neat. I'll start suiting up then. Oh, look, the Sleepy Time Swinger's back. Yeah, but it's a wooden sword this time. Yeah, unlike the last map, I didn't want to just give you OP stuff at the start. That's fair. But it begs the question. When do the monsters come in, Joe? Are we going to be seeing more of them, or did you just load them up in a big castle at the end again? Don't worry, guys. I took a different approach with the mobs for this map. We're definitely going to be seeing them more often. I'll believe it when I see it. So what's up with the area out here? So each level has a preview of what's to come. This one I actually really like, because I think it all came together perfectly. I call it the village. Is it shot time? Donald? Relax. I made sure to actually make a custom village for this level. Custom, he says. I'll be the judge of that, Joe. Hey, Donald, I get where you're coming from, but you... Oh? Wait, really? Yeah, see? I told you guys, I made a custom village. You got your shop, a hotel for tourists, a small town with a community pool. There's a church in the distance. Oh look, I see some horses. Where are we, Joe? So this is actually a small unnamed settlement, which consists of a little over a dozen people. For a good while, the people here were able to survive by living solely off of the land's resources. However, this would not last because the particular biome they were in soon became too barren for them to get by on their own. Animals which they would hunt for food would start disappearing, and even crops would strangely start growing at a much slower pace. Interesting. Desperate to help his home, the village leader, Father Jebediah, decided to open his community up to the outside world, bringing in tourists, seeking an escape from the modern life that we're all familiar with. Wow, I was not ready for all this lore. I'm assuming the whole tourist spot thing worked out for them because I noticed the big hotel and shop outside this area. Wonderful observation, Barack. Because of Father Jebediah's efforts, the town was able to grow, earning itself the nickname Morday's Peak. Morday's Peak? Why would they call a peaceful getaway spot that? This book actually states that the village is nearby a volcano named Mount Morday. It seems to be their most famous tourist spot. Correct. Rumor has it that the volcano is so deep that it actually is a portal into the nether itself. Ah. Uh. Some old folk tales from some country bumpkins. Man, I gotta say, the whole world you built here is pretty impressive so far. It may be good, but let's see how you executed this level, Joe. Quest to kill the Ender Dragon had some decent lore, too, and we all know how that turned out. Whatever, Donald. But that pretty much is everything to know about the village itself. So, Barack, go ahead and walk outside that door there. Got it. 
Whoa, what the hell? The time is 3.30 in the morning. You're a 21-year-old influencer who has a relatively popular exploration channel on social media. Excuse me? Hungry for your next big viral hit. You decide to explore to the old town of Morday's Peak to get a glimpse of their famous volcano. At three in the morning? Why'd this take such a shift? To your surprise, the pathway to the church, which has the minecart ride to the volcano, is locked off. So your assignment, Barack, is to find all six keys. Uh, okay, seems simple enough. The hotel seems like a big place to hide a key. May as well start here first. Quick question. Is this supposed to be a Joe Biden horror game? What makes you say that, Donald? It's three in the morning. The village looks empty. Maybe they're all sleeping. No, the vibe just seems off all of a sudden. It'll be fine, Donald. Let's just try to find those keys. Interesting room. There's no bathroom, Joe. Where are the guests supposed to take a leak? Oh, excuse me for not thinking about making a bathroom in Minecraft. I'm less than three minutes in, guys. Hmm, there doesn't seem to be anything here. Check the houses, Barry. Maybe there's a clue there that we're missing. There's gotta be, because I'm seeing a balcony up there. Let me just see what's over here real quick. Very hospitable of you. Well, I'm not even thinking about being polite, to be honest. I just don't want something sneaking up on me. Ah, very true. There's a pool over here. Ooh, this one looks better than the one in the Queen's box. Yeah, this area is equipped with diving boards, showers, and resting areas. Cool. Let's see. Shane's house. Fucking nothing. Hmm. Something's telling me that Joe got creative with hiding things around here. That would be a correct assumption, Barack. In fact, I'll go ahead and tell you now that each level has their own theme. If you couldn't tell, the village is actually based around exploration. Yeah, I gathered that, Joe, and it certainly seems to me like you included some subgenres here as well. Was there anything to that closed-off pathway we should know about? Actually, yes. The influencer had originally followed the road to get to the village, but was confused to see that the entryway was blocked off. Did he just walk in through the woods then? Right. But it wasn't easy because the forest surrounding Morday's Peak is super dense. God, look at all these chests. Don't worry, Barack. These are all just for show. Oh, that's a relief. I'm surprised you didn't find any food in there, though. I figured the 64 steaks would hold you over for a while, so I left it empty for atmospheric reasons. Geez, the silence is loud, guys. No kidding, man. I feel like I'm gonna see Jeb standing in between the trees with that dumbass costume. Bill's house? Hmm. Nothing here? Kate and Jim's house? Okay, Barack, I know this is petty, but it says home. Oh, thank God. I'm glad it's not just me who was thinking that. Oh, for the love of God, guys. Ooh, finally, I found something. Hopefully it's a hint on how to get the hell out of here. What? What the shit, Joe? Pretty creepy, right? There's a creature roaming around here? Oh, yes, Donald. And Barack, I'd advise you to be mindful of your surroundings. But pay attention to the information on some of the notes you find, because they hold hints for where you may find the keys. Oh, so these are the hints, huh? So what do we infer from this message? Well, these guys are talking about how they buried Kate and Jim by a lake before hiding in some trees. If I recall correctly, there was a forest behind Shane's house. Home. So, oh, for fo okay, home. Okay, so find the lake and scope through the trees. I can do that. Let me see if I can find other hints before I head out. Did you see that destroyed house over there? Yeah, we'll go over there in a minute. What's this, a thank you message? Yes. Jamie was an outsider who chose to have a rather extensive stay in Morday's Peak. She spent about six months with the residents of the town who let her stay in one of the vacant houses. Wow, that was awfully nice of them. What, what the fuck, Joe? My God. What is this? Just keep playing and it'll all make sense. Do you think the monster got to her? Maybe, but why would it take a photo? Hmm, yeah, that's true. A camera monster, maybe? That's... I mean, I wanna say stupid, but Joe is a bit creative. It's not a fucking camera monster. Fucking pricks. Can you blame us after witnessing the Tower Terror, the mansion monster, cave creature? How about the camera killer? Hang on, Donald. Frank's letter here actually might have answered our question. See, I told you, Donald. Yeah, yeah. What does it say, Barry? He starts by talking about an unnamed outsider who escaped into the woods. It doesn't say what they were doing, but it couldn't have been good considering that Father Jebediah is panicking. Hmm. Okay. The message also tells you about two more keys which you'll need to find. Right. One's located at the pool and the other two are in the forest. I'll be sure to begin looking after exploring these last couple of houses. What the? Oh. Is that Harold? Well, actually, he's the head behind you. Ah. So this creature was actually something they knew about? It seems that way, yeah. 
But I guess karma finally paid them back for whatever it was they did with these outsiders. You think the whole village was in on it? Considering the use of the word outsider, I would assume so, yeah. Looks like we got some more redstone over here. You know, Barry, I, I'm still processing the fact that we went from a goofy-ass fantasy story to a goddamn bloodbath. Joe, what was even your motivation for this level? To be honest, I just wanted to make a fun horror level. I really don't have anything more than that. Wow. See what I say, Barry. Joe's thoughts are a scary place to be. Oh, shut the fuck up, Donald. Oh, wow. So I feel like I know what was going on here. Oh yeah? Go ahead and tell me what you think. If you're right, I'll be more than happy to relay some more details. Based off what I've read, I'm guessing that the people of the town were bringing outsiders in to feed to whatever this creature was at the bottom of the church. Congratulations, Barack. You've managed to put together a fraction of the story. Where is this creature anyway, Joe? Didn't you say that he was roaming around somewhere? Oh, don't worry. It's coming. Oh, for fuck's sake. Here we go again with this shit. Would you relax, Donald? Okay, let's head to the showers first. Barry, could you humor me for a second? What do you want? Can we jump off the diving boards? Uh, maybe after I get the key. Come on, it'll literally take five seconds. And finding the key will take less than five seconds. Hang on. You're such a buzzkill, man. This must have been Rose. Joe, I find it a bit creative that you thought to use redstone as blood. Thanks, Donald. Perfect, I found the first key. Very nice, now go to the diving board. Get ready for this. What'd you think of that? Barack, you didn't put any heart into that dive. Move over, I'll show you how we do it back home. Did you see how elegant my form was? Just give me the damn keyboard, Donald. What's in here, Joe? This is Shane's blacksmith workshop. Shane had earned his title of village handyman by building a majority of the houses and pretty much all of the tourist areas. Wait a minute. I don't know why I'm just now thinking about this, but why the hell does an old-timey village have a whole-ass community pool? Don't hurt yourself thinking about it, Donald. Real quick, Joe. I just obtained a random fire resistance potion. Where am I even supposed to use this? Just observe your surroundings and think critically, Barack. You'll figure it out. What's this? Ah, uh, I get it. Here goes nothing. Couldn't imagine how long it would take Donald to figure out these clues. Are you slandering me? Yeah, I am. I literally have done nothing, Joe. If this was you playing, I feel like you'd get frustrated and start roaming around before thinking of analyzing the clues. Yeah, well this all looks like easy shit, so frankly you can shut the fuck up. Can we take a breath and relax, fellas? Hey, talk to him, he's the damn instigator. Okay, anyway. I found a singed skull at the bottom of the little lava hole back there. I'm pretty sure that was Shane, right? Yes, and he left a rather angry message with Jebediah, if you hadn't noticed. I did notice. And Joe, you mentioned a moment ago that you'd bring up some more details to help me piece together what happened here. Care to help me run through this? Right, so here's the series of events that you've pieced together so far. Huh. See how I referenced the map's title there? Yes, Joe, good job. The villagers of Morday's Peak speak of feeding outsiders to an unnamed monster which resides under the church. We can currently assume they did it because the creature was threatening their safety. Yeah, I figured it had to have been a life for a life kind of thing. So what's the deal with this Shane guy and Father Jebediah? As I mentioned earlier, Father Jebediah is the head of the village. Being a man of God, he couldn't bring himself to perform the heinous acts that needed to be done to help his people. So he got with his closest friend, Shane the blacksmith, who was an imposing man with a hidden lust for murder. With his help, the two managed to lure people in, deceiving them with hospitality and tourist attractions only to ultimately feed them to the beast below the church grounds. Where the fuck was this story in quest to kill the Ender Dragon? What are you talking about? In the last map, it was just, you're a guy with a sword who's pissed because the Ender Clan burned down your village. That's literally not the story, Donald. Yeah, he quite actually explained an entire D&D adventure plot during your playthrough. But that was cheesy. This is actually a cool story, Barack. I didn't think Joe was capable of making a decent Minecraft horror story. Guess you should have lost that Mario World challenge then, huh? Okay, we're getting way off track. Sorry. Let me see if I can find that lake. So why did Jebediah let out the camera killer? Shane and his goons were the ones who took the damn photo, Donald. Found the graves. But the reason he let the creature out is because an injured outsider managed to escape from Shane's clutches. Fearing that their secret would be exposed, Jebediah's conscience finally gave in to the grief he felt for all he's done. But rather than wait for the justice system to provide him his penance, hmm. he chose what he considered to be a more appropriate form of judgment. I wonder if there's something in the trees. Wow, so he gave himself and all of his friends over to the monster? That's right. What a fucking coward. You think he's a coward? Absolutely.
He's a shitty person with serious blood on his hands. And the second he gets caught, he chooses the easy way out, which, mind you, also results in a cannibalistic monster just out in the fucking wild. Oh, shit, there it is. Barack, were you listening to all that? Yeah, and I do agree with you. I like how invested you're getting with my story, Donald. Yeah, to be honest, I like a good horror story. It's not the most intricate thing I've heard, but I do like it. This seems like the only sensible way to get to the key. Yeah, you're on the right track. Perfect. Okay, so there are three keys left to find. I recall one of the notes stating that the outsider had taken a key before running into the forest. So we gotta go find him then. Hmm, maybe this way. God, this fucking silence is killing me. Watch out for Jeb, Barack, or he'll snatch you from the shadows again. Why the hell are you joking about that, Donald? The guy kidnapped us and held a gun to your head because he wanted us to play a video game. First of all, it was a Nerf gun. Second, the guy ain't shit and I cope with humor. Fair enough, I guess, but still. Yeah, I think I still got oh. that bruise on the back of my head. Huh, but hey, at least I got that good wallop at that guy. A rusty sword. A rusty sword made of stone. That's actually one of Shane's older weapons, which the outsider managed to swipe before slipping away. Unfortunately for the guy, his injuries were too severe, and he ended up bleeding out in the middle of the woods. Wow, that's fucked up, man. I see he left us a note. To any outsider, don't trust the town. They are liars. They will take you too. And then it just cuts off. Bleeding out? Hearing voices? I guess in his last moments, he forgot how to properly spell here. Y yeah, that's it. And then it just says under church. Fucking eerie as shit. I have a weird feeling that I may have missed something in the shop. There's no way an area with this many chests has nothing. Maybe there's something behind the register? I didn't even think about that. There's a hole to your right, Barry. Perfect. Good eye, Donald. Aw, oh, shit. Another head. Who's this, I wonder? Oh, this is Bill? Not Bill as in Clinton, right, Joe? No, Donald. I would not put people we know in a Minecraft map. Eh, I wouldn't put it past you. Holy shit, Rip Andy, I guess. Who? The guy Bill's talking about in this book. Hey, Joe, Bill's statement about Andy's got me wondering something. What's that, Barack? Did everyone agree with this whole murder-sacrifice thing? There were a few folks who had their grievances with the idea, but found ways to make peace with it because it was thought to be their only way to survive. I see. So... You currently have five keys, right? Correct. Then the sixth one's got to be in that hotel. See, that's what I was figuring, but I don't know where the fuck to go. I don't think there would be anything here, right? Like a hidden passage or something? Nah, I'll tell you, you're cold right now. Watch it be something really simple. To be honest, it actually is more simple than you think. Gee, thanks for that, Joe. I feel like I'm wandering around like an idiot right now without a clue to... Hmm. Don't say anything. Yeah, that is pretty simple, Barack. Yeah, thank you, Donald. Okay, great. Now let's see what's up here. Are we able to actually get in the elevator shaft? Yes, but only on the top floor. What's all that stuff on the wall? Shane and Frank would come up here to cook up some tranquilizer potions. They made capturing outsiders a lot easier. God, fuck these people. W why are you getting so worked up? Because what if these guys are out here killing Americans, Barry? It's fucking Minecraft, Donald. Joe, is this supposed to be a body? You quivering yet, Barack? I mean... The villagers kept records and bodies of folks that they would kill for the monster. And they kept them in the hotel? How the fuck didn't these idiots get sniped sooner? Outsider profiles? That's right, Barack. All of the books in this room marks a different person who was sacrificed to the beast. Even the ones up here? Yes, Donald. Holy shit, so they've been doing this for a while then. Hmm. Well, there's the elevator shaft. Oh, Jesus, what's this? I am sorry, but I cannot continue with the plan. The guilt that has continued to grow in my heart has reached a point where it can no longer be contained. Is this only because Jebediah let the monster out of the church? See, after that outsider escaped the village, the thought of what could happen put everyone in a state of panic. And it was within that panic where some found either extreme grief or hostility. In Andy's case, it was an unfathomable amount of grief. Damn, that's pretty deep shit, Joe. Son of a bitch, Joe. W what did I do? Why did Barack have to get the better Minecraft map? Uh, because you beat him in the Mario World Challenge? Which, by the way, that whole thing was technically your idea because you didn't want to play my second map. That's true, Donald. Maybe so, but how was I supposed to know the second map would actually be better? Maybe because I fucking said it, like 18 times while you two were talking shit? How the hell was I supposed to know that was a true statement? I mean, I was expecting Barack to go through another one of your maze labyrinths by this point. Oh, Lord, give me the strength. Time to see what's at the other end of this tunnel. I mean, hopefully the monster that Joe's been hyping up. Don't worry, Barack will be facing the beast in time. 
Okay. Behold, boys, we are about to enter the void of Morday's Peak, the place where every outsider's story comes to an abrupt end. Ironic for it to be a church. I wonder where we'll find Jebediah. He better already be on the ground if we see him. Meeting area? Yes, the villagers gathered here to plan their heinous deeds. Hmm. And if you walk behind the main staircase, you'll find the door to the final part of the level, which requires two keys to access. Oh, I gotta find two more keys? Considering the size of this place, that shouldn't be too difficult. Mm, yeah, you have a point there. Ooh, what's this? This area is sort of like Jebediah's closet. I figured it to be a clever way to acquire the first set of armor in the map. That's because I was starting to feel pretty bare in this church. Huh, looking pretty godly. Oh my god, Barry. What, are you hating on Father Bama, the divine? Oh, for the love oh, of God. Oh, Jesus, my fucking spine is contracting. Is this supposed to be a portrait of Jebediah? That is what the sign says. I feel like something's about to lash out at me. If I'm being honest, this gets me thinking about how eerie of a game Minecraft can be. Hmm. Up there is Jebediah's office. If I were you, I'd be on my toes, Barack. We don't know what could be hiding behind that little trap door. Doesn't seem like anything. I swear, Joe, is this level about exploration or anticipation? I mean, it's a horror level, so technically both. W wait, what the? Oh, shit. Ah, I see you finally noticed. Father Jebediah made sure to have the remains of each outsider buried outside the church grounds so he can stare down at them. The influencer also notices a foul odor coming from one of the far corners of the room. A foul odor? Following the smell, he finds the rotting skinned corpse of Levi. Leaned against the wall, facing the corner in an awkward position. How could you just casually think this up, you old weirdo? By subjecting myself to six plus hours of horror films, dickhead. Fucking see- What the hell are you doing in the White House, Joe? What do you mean, what am I doing? I'm just wondering where you find the time to run the country in between watching movies, playing Minecraft, and dancing to fucking Beat Saber. Oh, like you didn't make some downtime to de-stress your blubbery ass. Okay, you wanna fucking throw childish Can we please shut up for a second and focus on what's happening in this church? Fine. Whatever, man. So, Joe, what am I looking at here? This is a book full of logs from Jebediah's study of the creature, which he refers to as the prisoner. Damn, so he's been dealing with this thing since 2013? Yeah. Jebediah states that the creature just one day emerged in the underground caves, eating everything it could get its claws on. He didn't know what it was, nor could he find out where it came from. What he did know is that it was posing a drastic threat on the livelihoods of he and his people. Fearing that the creature would escape from the tunnel, Jebediah and Shane get together and concoct the wicked scheme which led us to where we are now. It says here that Shane was the one who thought up a fake volcano to attract tourists. And Jebediah, almost from the very beginning, was skeptical of Shane's true intentions. That's right. Despite them being longtime friends, Jebediah never knew of Shane's twisted desire to enact harm onto others. The creature was actually his golden ticket being used as the convenient scapegoat to disguise his crimes as something noble to his peers. Not to derail here, but I'm noticing a few typos in this book. I'm noticing that as Barack's skimming through here. I'll be sure to fix all that when I post the map. I mean, not to play devil's advocate, but it low-key seems more realistic for a frantic person to make a few misspellings. Wait, hold on. Am I reading that Jebediah actually considered leaving before letting the creature out? Andy and Bill tried persuading him, yes because they saw which direction the wind was blowing with Shane and his group. The three of them knew there was no going back after what the village did as a collective, Jebediah most of all. When he declined their proposal, they made the fatal decision of staying with him, which led to Bill being murdered by Shane and Andy committing, well, you know. Okay, Joe, I have a serious question for you. Why the hell are you wasting your time as president when you could just be writing screenplays? I'm just gonna take that as a compliment. Is that blood on the floor? I'm not gonna lie, Joe, my body is super tense right now. Whoa! What, what, what's going on here? I know this isn't that scary because it's Minecraft with no mods. But try to understand the true terror of the situation. You're in the attic which is full of corpses, which were propped up as if they were guarding something. Oh my god. Okay, this is officially scarier than the mortuary assistant with Jeb. After passing the deceased, you find yourself staring at a dim light on the other side of the attic. Okay. I don't trust this. What? Is everything okay, Joe? Uh, well, why don't you go ahead and read the book? Uh, okay. This must have been recent because Jebediah is talking about that outsider escaping. Oh yeah, you're right. Looks like he finally caught on to Shane too. Oh really? After several years of slaughter? Fucking took him long enough. Barack, could you do me a favor and open that chest again? May I ask why? Just do it, please. Alright. 
Ah, oh, there we go. Oh, shit. I summoned Jebediah? Yes, and believe me, he's not too thrilled to see you. As you reach for the final key, a shadowy figure emerges from the darkest corner of the attic. W what the fuck, Barack? Are you seriously not gonna fight him? I don't want him to attack me while I'm reading. You're supposed to read his notes after you kill him. Joe, you literally told me to read the book. Wait, yeah, you actually did, Joe. Well, I thought the command block was delayed. You sure you don't want to just fight him first? Nah, we're already here, Joe. Sorry. Damn. Not gonna lie, Barack, you kinda fucked up my whole build-up here. Again, I'm sorry, Joe. Can we please continue? Yeah, sure. Uh, so yeah, Jebediah lost his shit after the Outsider escaped, causing him to release the creature from the underground cavern. To his utter shock, the creature approached him, but did not take his life. Damn, son of a bitch got lucky. Not really, because this single interaction was enough to completely shatter his psyche. It's unknown as to if it was the creature possessing him, or simply his own insanity finally taking hold of the mere shambles of his mind. Oh wow, look at this. Yep, Jebediah's final entry. By this point, he was something else. Still human, of course, but more of a monster than a man. Wow, so he basically turned into a worse Shane? I await Morde? Yes. For death is in fact real, boys. It comes in many forms, at different places, at different times. In the case of Morday's Peak, it came as this entity, the embodiment of consumption. Whoa, I got some serious chills from that, Joe. I'm glad. Now, Barack, go ahead and put Jebediah out of his misery. Here goes. <laughs> Oh, shit. Oh, Jesus, he's wrecking your shit, Barry. No fucking way, man. I'm getting out of here. God damn it. Roll the credits, Joe. Barry, if I'm being honest, that was actually a fitting end for a horror film. Well, it ain't gonna be the ending to my film, Donald. Oh, damn it. Stay away. Jesus, this is fucking intense. Bitch has gone so crazy, he forgot how to use a door. Don't be cheap, Barry. Don no, Donald, you would fucking do this too. Ooh, I found a system here. Perfect. That's pretty lame, not gonna lie. Well, unfortunately, Joe, you made Jebediah too fucking strong. Rest in peace, motherfucker. A tragic circumstance. But he had it coming. Oh, what? Hmm, that's a bit strange. There's obviously no going back from this point. I can see that. All right, well, guess I'm doing this. What? Sh What's going on? shit! It's coming. Oh, fuck that. I gotta get out of here. Good luck with that. I can't see shit. Just step forward and hit the button. W okay. All right, where the hell am I now? Congratulations, Barack. You've completed the first event of this series. Huh? Well, wait, what about the influencer and the fucking monster? What do you mean? That guy's fucked. What? So that level just has a bad ending, no matter what. Well, I mean, you tell me what he could have done, Barack. The dumbass went into the cave, which, hey, there's a fuck ton of notes everywhere saying the creature's down there. Wow, I'm not gonna lie, that's fucking hilarious. I, I just don't even know what to say. So how are you guys feeling about the map so far? That was the first level, Barry. Yeah, it sure was. And a fantastic one at that. Joe, if that's how we're starting off, I'm hand to God, excited to see what we have in store. If you guys like that, then I feel like you'll love what I have next. I don't even know how to properly react to what I just saw. Here I was expecting something goofy and ridiculous, but instead Joe cooked up something creepy as heck. I wonder if the rest of this map will have horror elements. That would certainly be interesting. I'm eager to see where this goes in the next installment. Until then, thank you to all who have been patiently waiting on the Minecraft map series to continue. See you guys in the next one.